begin. What's up? Episode 16. 16 six. minute shit show. <laughs> Yo, I can set a timer that goes down, like, big timer that counts down so we know how long we've been on air. I know now because it's 908. So about right. 1008, I was going to shut it down. All right. We'll shut it down at 1008. All right. So what's going on, everybody? What's I am up? fresh out of the movie theater. Oh, shit. Saw Ant Man and the Wasp. Dope, dope. Nate yep. was in the same theater as well. There, we there. All right. Oh my god. Gang, gang, gang. Yeah. Perfect place. So I saw I saw it on uh, on Tuesday, so we can actually talk about it. or Monday. I saw no. it on Monday. Yep. We got to, we got to do a spoiler free version. It was mm, it was okay. good and it was funny. That post, it was very that, funny. That post credit scene though. Hey, why did Aaron? Right, we're in the theater. Yeah. We're surrounded by kids. Okay. And all of a sudden, when she realizes what happened, she screams, "Oh shit!" <laughs> in a theater full of kids. In a theater full of kids. That? In a theater full of kids. There was some people fighting back there. What was going uh, on? There was a special there? needs kid in the front. Uh-huh. Now the one guy in the black hat was yelling really viciously at this at this guy, and I don't know why. I have no idea why. I'm, but it, one of the people screaming, the kid screaming, was special needs. So oh. I don't know what happened. But anyway, that's besides the point. That makes no sense to anyone but me yeah. and Nate because we were the only ones. Who I heard was like, shh. Twas, yeah, that motherfucker. Yeah. yeah. Good movie. Jazz. I liked it. Yo, I liked it a lot. I think it was better than the first movie. Definitely. <laughs> it's great. What movie is this? Ant-Man, Ant-Man and, the Wasp. and the Wasp. I know. I just... <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I thought it was great. I thought it was a good movie. I, I like how I was telling Aaron on the way home that I like how uh, the MCU from 1 to 20 has like expanded on so many ideas and concepts that were in the comic books, but they've just like naturally just like kind of organically yeah. Yeah, yeah. like brought it out and like Ant-Man 1, here's a little little, little quantum realm, little little quantum. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this one... Boom. Yeah. You know? Also, they worked in Goliath. Yeah, 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 yeah. And like, it was it was totally natural. Yeah, I yeah. love that. So good. It's pretty tight. I liked it. I liked Two, the villain a lot. Twenty five feet. The villain's dope <laughs> as fuck. She was dope. Yo, every time She's Ghost was on screen, she stuff. was doing some crazy shit. Yeah. The, the, the was, way uh, they the way they motivation. We oh, can't give you that. Yeah, that's, that's super teaser. Okay, that's too much yeah. super yeah. teaser. Yeah. yeah. Um, but every time she moved because she she phases through quantum realm and shit. Every time she moved, like every frame of the movie, there were like two or three versions of her doing different shit. Yeah, yeah it's pretty crazy. That had, really had cool. to be torture. Oh yeah, to that go was, through. Yeah, it's dope though. Yeah, real Super dope. dope. Yeah, um, I have no concept. complaints with the movie. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, know. I, know. I, I was scared that it was going to be a bunch of big, small, big, small, big, small, big, small shit, and it, it was. But the it, fight scenes, sure, yeah. Yeah, but it was it was dope how they did it too. Yes. Like every wasp, wasp fight was, scene was insane. Lit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was insane. Like that was she was the action. It was um, it was good. Yeah, I what saw was, uh, an interview about how they mixed the Me Too movement with the uh, you know release of Ant Man and the Wasp and basically like retooling it to make sure that you know hmm. she got that shine in this second one, which is which she was, was a very important character. Yeah, I could tell how they dropped the trailer. He was like, "Oh, she got wings. She got blasters," and I was like, "Oh, okay, this is." This is a part of them trying to do that rollout of that whole all female team they keep talking about. Yeah, they keep teasing the all female MCU movie, or Which just is fire. just oh, they say eventually get... MCU will be predominantly female. Yeah, well, we got I, Captain I Marvel that. showing up. Black yeah. Widow's getting her own movie. I'm, I don't care about that. But I'm saying it's going to be like yeah. every spy yeah. movie that came, a, every female spy movie that came out. Wasp this is a year. big character. Yeah. Um, Gamora. Well, we'll see. Uh, we don't know how that's going to turn out. Shh, they can save that. Yeah. I mean, I don't yeah. want to see a Gamora either. Like, just because uh, just they're just, uh, I, I don't know. Yo, Gwen Stacy, though, in the Spider-Man universe would be super dope. Oh, that would be Spider, awesome. Spider-Gwen. I, I would love that. Yeah. That would definitely love that. With her black that. and white and pink hoodie. Ooh. Yeah. So, so, so why are they saying this is going to be the lowest opening of any Marvel movie? That's the first thing I read about this movie. Well, I probably. Like, I just don't think it's, it's a big enough market. title. Yeah. Like, so that motherfucker theater was sold out today. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty packed. And, and just Ant Man hasn't well, look, been a part of yeah, all the like, Marvel shit. He's I think, been in his, his movie, a little bit of Civil War, yeah. and then his second movie. I mean, you have Black Panther and Affinity War. Like, they know they can't trump that with Ant Man. Well, okay. There's never going to be is that a what universe. They're comparing it to, Dean? Yeah, there's never okay. going to be a universe that we live they in in do, which. Yeah. They did the same thing with the last Ant Man. They said, wasn't nobody going to show up, and they made. They made know, good money. They, they didn't make money. Guardians they didn't, money. They didn't make Guardians money. They're not gonna. Because when that Guardians dropped, no. they didn't expect that to do anything. Like, it, yeah. and it was, it, it became their most successful at the time. Yeah. Movie. Yeah, for her. I think Guardian opened it up to the. Bring the merchandise. To I the also, new fans. I also thought Ant Man's comedy wasn't. I was afraid it was gonna be feel forced. 
It wasn't forced, no, and right. I feel like the other people had funnier moments. Like the sure, the uh, yeah. FBI agent cracked me up. Yeah, he was like, he was like uh, you want to go to dinner? Wait, <laughs> like, do, do you want? <laughs> yeah, do you, do you wanna, that was so hilarious. Good. Sorry, was so if you, good. also the guys at, at XCon. Yeah, of what? course they're always they they have a good chemistry. Those three. Ti Baba Yaga. Shout out to Ti. Oh, <laughs> uh, Ti was in it with yeah, the yeah. Yeah. current yeah. role. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's, it's good to see him in in that role and staying in that role, and I liked it. Baba, yep. Baba Yaga. <laughs> <laughs> when All she right. shows up and he's like, oh my God, like crossing himself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I liked how everyone freaked out. Like, all right, here's my Infinity War, right? That's the first time they may have, they, a lot of people like saw the Chitauri Chita- 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 from Avengers 1, right? Yeah, yeah. On the battlefield. But when Thor comes with Rocket and Groot, that. I think people should freak out. I thought I would think they would freak out a lot yeah, more. Yeah, a god just showed up from nowhere. A god and, shows like, up, called down a thunderstorm, which they they may have heard of, but a lot of those people. I know they're fighting space dogs, right? Yeah, but I th- <laughs> still think a talking raccoon space and dogs. tree would fuck them up. Yeah, but ghost shows up in this movie, and everyone's like, "Fuck!" fuck! Oh, god! <laughs> which was a, which was like the appropriate reaction. So you talking about the Wakandans should have been some somebody. No. Uh, like, I mean, after you, the Panther God bast and all this other stuff, I really might not think they. Yeah, but they, they didn't. They, but they didn't they, know about aliens. They, they, yeah, yeah like, actually, kind of they. They, do. Might, they know about English everything. Aliens? I mean, because that's oh, vast as an interdimensional entity. You know what I'm saying? Kind of. They've like also existed Dormammu since, and all that kind of stuff. So. They've also existed since Avengers One, and they've been watching the world. So, yeah, so they saw yeah. New York, I guess. Yeah. And since Black Panther eventually becomes, you know, ruler of a planet, Wakanda, you know, in the comic universe, yeah. I always figured they had their eye on something. You know, beyond Earth, before mm-hmm. we even was thinking about it. Maybe, perhaps. Shuri is the, is the queen in the uh, Infinity. I'm reading Infinity now, mm. and it's pretty dope to see Shuri, Shuri is, is the, the queen. Is the queen? That's dope. Yeah. Hmm. Like the Black Panther can't even like Black Panther. He's not. He's not in charge. She is. So what? Yeah. He's just the muscle. He's yep. still Black yeah, Panther. He's the muscle. Yeah. But he has just to the move muscle. under the crown. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's what's up. Yeah, that's crazy. Me All too. Right. All right, moving on. Moving on. Have, has anyone seen the topics? Am I the only one who knows the topics? No, I went yes. through all the topics and watched all the videos for the first time. Thank you. Yeah, Damn, I Caleb is so good. I'm not, get that just, email. I'm not just the guy you throw in when your when your A strings hurt. I'm the pinch hitter you put in when you want to win the game. I know, <laughs> I know it. I know it. I know it. All right, you know I, we didn't do introductions. I'm Tech Supreme. Uh, just filling in for Ben is Caleb Sawyer. Of course, we got. Uh, my name is uh, <laughs> Cletus Maximus tonight. All right, Cletus. Should we refer to you as Cletus the rest of the yes. episode? Please do. I'm not going to remember that. And a special <laughs> special guest back from the altercation episode. He's bo- he's <laughs> is that what you guys been calling it? That's what I call it. <laughs> I, that is... What are you talking about? Afrofuturism you guys. Engineered. Siraj. That's what's up, man. You engineered it. I did not. I might have engineered it a little bit. All right. Um, so it's been happening a lot in the news lately, where it's been it's been happening all of our lives, but it's now it's in the news. But now there's Twitter. <laughs> but now there's everyone has a camera in their pocket. Yep. White people calling the cops on black people. This is like the new once a week, and I saw a new one today. What's For, the new uh, one today? Let me, let me tell you, it's four. This is the charge she evoked while on the phone and being recorded. Selling water. Without a permit. Yeah. Fuck off. I mean. Mm. Selling water without Kid. a permit. Selling water. She's eight. She's eight. What could she be doing? You know what we should do? We should get in the car and call the cops on little white kids in the suburbs with lemonade stands. <laughs> Selling That's lemonade I bet, I bet without you, a permit. I bet you we get in trouble. We get arrested. Oh, yeah. man. That video will go I, viral. I heard that... Uh, well, first off, I'd be, it's not even regular people. These are people that's like gentrifying urban neighborhoods. So it's two different lifestyles coming into a clash. If you ask me, just looking at these stories, they're clashing because the way the, the way old girl, uh, the lady that made the call, made the story sound like the eight year old was outside yelling because the game had let out some kind of athletic you I know think what it was the, competition. Yeah, they were down, living in whatever downtown is a major league baseball right. game across the street. She was selling water. So she probably Wait, was like, what? Water? Yeah, oh, water. they live across the street from the ballpark. Yeah. So she didn't realize the this window. was outside of a ball game. Yeah. So, so, that's the person she decided to pick on. So she yeah. was on her stoop, but I guess she was close enough to get that foot traffic from sure. the game. So she's sure. yelling, water, water, come get your water type thing. And then I guess old girl just, you know. Which is, I mean, it's a legit, it's a smart kid. Yeah. Buy dollar waters and sell them for two. 
Yeah. And they're going to buy them. Guess what? That's the buy a case literally of, what lemon yeah. stands, lemonade stands are. Buy a case of 48 waters for five bucks, sell yeah, it for man. a dollar. You're making buku. Yeah. It, it's 50 year olds with no jobs on Natural Bridge and King's Highway doing that, bro. Yep. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? And they ain't even cold but water. What do you think? So the video I saw today was uh, this uh, woman who was very articulate and uh, had a very thick accent, um, probably from Africa, so, uh, some, somewhere. Oh, very, you but, said very thick? Yeah, very thick oh, accent. I heard fake. Sorry, go ahead. No, very thick, very thick accent. Very thick accent. All right. And um, she was basically, uh, she was, she, the cops were already there, and she was saying that um, this this guy who works at some capacity walked up directly to her and asked, demanded ID and demanded proof that she is supposed to be, that she could be there. So it was a big back and forth. The cop was, uh, didn't take a side, but it was like, well, you know, she does a card work to get in the gate. Like that's the. And he tried. Mm-hmm. He took the card, put it on the gate. He's like, yeah, leave her alone. Like she's oh supposed yeah, to be the there. kids at the pool. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, I read about that. Yeah. yeah. And it just that. it just came out today, I think, the video. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, but that's like it was in U City, because back in U City, back in the day, what was this? Uh, who knows? Ninety six to two thousand. We used to have a pool there, and you used mm-hmm. to be able to be a resident, and then you'd be able to invite a certain amount of guests. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure in the other communities that's still the same, you know what I'm saying, the same thing. But then when you get all them youth in there, you know, they what youth. Do you, what do you think the end game is? Like, it's the thing. You have, you have, that uh, sound effect. Barbecue Betty, right? Or Betty, bar, bar, barbecue Betty. You have, uh, Permit Patty. Peppermint, Peppermint Patty. Permit, Permit Patty. Patty. <laughs> what do you think the end game is? Like, what, well, like, to get why? black people is harassed. It, is it to get us killed? End game. Uh, maybe not killed, but just in trouble. They just, they, <laughs> That's what they own, man. They just they I mean, hate they kill us. you with the paperwork, though. Well, why couldn't it be sinister to get you killed if they if they? If it could be though. They know, in this, they all know that we that know that could happen. happen. We know, right? You right. know that cops come and our our risk of not making out alive is increased. Yeah, especially right? the black males. Yeah. Do you think they don't know that? No, they know. Yeah, they suspect it. Yeah, it, man. It seems like one of those things where, like, I'm going to say like a ton of, a dozen times because I, like. I don't know. No, it's one of those things that it's. People that don't understand or care to understand or have ever known or have ever seen or it's people that are completely unfamiliar with black people. And when they act differently than they do, or even when they act the same, they feel uncomfortable because they look different and like everything they've watched has taught them that there something's bad about that. Hmm. And so like it's one of those things where instead of instead of being okay with it and like waiting to see if something bad happens they assume something bad is going to happen and don't want to wait for the bad thing to happen so they call the police i think most and that's true but some of them people they they feel i don't know if they feel guilty but they feel something about this wave that they in you know what i mean because it's just like when you gentrify in these neighborhoods like what's about to happen in st louis you know 2020 and beyond um when you gentrify in these neighborhoods, like I was a part of a, a neighborhood cleanup like last week down in the JVL, you know what I'm saying, do a proxy. And most of the people that was down there helping clean up, they don't live in the neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? You would think that the people that's actually in them apartment complexes and in that general vicinity would be a part of a neighborhood cleanup because they're going to be directly impacted, you know what I'm saying, sure. right now. But a lot of the people, you know, you know, Caucasians, Europeans, all kind of different people, they out there actively thinking about you see what i'm saying cleaning up that neighborhood for a purpose ahead of time so when you're dealing with that mindset versus people that's kind of you know my grandma lived here my cousin lived around the corner you know what i'm saying they got yeah. a they got a sense of um what's the word i want to use uh, i don't want to say privilege but you know you don't own no property on this block and they they don't understand as much as they should how how powerful it is to own the deed to that house you yeah. see what i'm saying and keep and keep it moving not only that add money to the neighborhood, you know what I'm saying, and increase the the value, and that's what we facing. That's what a lot of them people is facing. I don't want to. I don't. Yeah, I I agree with that on a on a larger scale, but I also don't want to. I don't want to assume like because we have you know outreach is is outreach, and I don't think all outreach is an attempt at cleaning something up so you can take it over later. Uh, the yeah. same argument of like you don't live on those streets, so you're why are you cleaning them up? We people go and build houses in favelas that get hit by hurricanes, and like I think. Assuming that it's only because they want to take move in and take over is also assuming that like people don't actually just want to help. Yeah, I ever. mean, yeah, they want to help themselves first, and the way the way you help yourselves is by actually being on the ground. So when they move in, that's they feel like they're helping already. Because let me be real, once you move in, you got a certain tax bracket, 
the property value goes up. That's the whole point of all this. That's why, you know what I'm saying, NARA. Yeah, but you don't think any of those people are there, like, just generally wanting to help? I think that's a second or third motivation, sure. I mean, I'm sure But you they, don't think, like, anyone's no, first motivation think they, is No, I think they see a four-family flat that's cheap. They know their family needs space. They see Man. what we don't get trained to see. I'm not saying, like, second, third, you know, they're not good neighbors. And they're not, you know, everything else that comes with that. But <laughs> we Americans, <laughs> we selfish. You know what I'm saying? That's the first motivation. You know, yeah. I don't I don't see them just coming to clean that neighborhood and never coming back. They're going to start a store. They got, you know, they got something to do with that area. A food truck. They got something they want to do with that area. It's not just because these people need help and I want to clean up. You know what I'm saying? And then on the other end, the people that's not coming out to clean up, you know what I'm saying, they don't really deserve uh, any kind of extra helping hand. I'm, I'm, I'm being honest with you. If you own so if you own fixed income or if, you know what I'm saying, you've been living in that area for such a long time, but you're not a part of those things on the ground, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, well, you deserve a little a poke and a pride and, and to get up out of here because you need to realize what's going on. You know, otherwise, move your ass to North County because that's where you belong. You know what I'm saying? Where, with no sidewalks. Wow. Because all that, all that shit downtown, it's a gym. It's a gym. It's a jewel. Wide it's streets. Been, it's been away for Brick a while. houses. You see what I'm saying? The, it, it's too many. It's, so, it's too much room for ingenuity. So I, I can't be mad at it. But you know what I'm saying. I always had mixed feelings about gentrification. It's a weird. It's like a, I, it's a, like if you're there, fix it. You know what I mean? Like it's a tangled yeah. web, ain't it? Yeah. Well, it's one of those things, though. At the same time, like look. At, I don't know how to if to congratulate it or to hate it so much. You know what I mean? Look at Oakland. But there's there's a there's a trend. I don't, I don't even mean to say a trend. There's a. There's a, like a measurable difference between the cleanliness of people that have money and are comfortable right. and people who do not have money and are not comfortable. When you don't have money, you're not comfortable and you don't got shit to do. Cleaning is not what you do. Cleaning is a bored, is a bored privileged person's task. Poor, and- poor people don't clean up very much. People that are in unfortunate and like disadvantaged neighborhoods don't clean up very much. And- so I don't think it's as simple as saying like... I don't think it's enough of us cleaning up because I'm poor and I clean up. Sure, yeah, but like... Statistically, just you know, just for my set, just rep for my poor people. Hey, yeah, but at the same time, like the city that's cl- the city that goes around and cleans nicer places also isn't helping and cleaning the right. Those and that places. wasn't even the city; that was just a neighborhood organization. They go into every, you know, what I'm saying. So I think the right. neighborhood organization has the right idea because Better Family Life, who, who sponsored that cleanup, they go into every neighborhood, whether they have, you know, what I'm saying, somebody yeah. on the ground or not, you know. But I think the people that's participating, we need more. You know what I'm saying? Because that's when we can have them conversations so that we don't have to have an argument. Because there was no reason that lady shouldn't have known the young girl that was out there, you know what I'm saying, pushing the waters. You know what I'm saying? Or like the young brother that got, uh, so, like some the neighbors got called on him when he was doing a lawn service. Like this little brother got him, his cousins, his brothers and sisters, they all cutting grass, cutting lawn. And he accidentally, I guess, cut the grass over a property line. And the, and the neighbors called the police. You see what I'm saying? To say, he, yeah, you know, just a little stuff like that. You see what I'm saying? That's, that's, that's a that's a lifestyle conflict, yeah. man. You know what I'm saying? That's too much time in front of the screen and no no uh no personality, no people skills. Yeah, I think this whole this whole thing with people calling the cops on people is a result of uh, people being feeling emboldened by the news that they see and seeing that like black people are up to no good. They don't belong here, uh, and living in a political culture where people are allowed to say and think and do as they please on national TV or whatever has made people feel more comfortable being a, a, a thorn in the side. Uh, yeah, Black people, you can move them for free first. You know what I'm saying? Move them out the area and then get everything going. Because trust me, 2020, 2022, St. Louis downtown will be, you won't recognize it. It's got the largest percentage of young white people. <laughs> you will not recognize I don't even recognize the South no more. You know what I'm saying? The South side, I don't even recognize a lot of them houses. Largest. Well, you know got what I'm saying? In any other city. Of, We've got a lot of really reputable schools that are churning out kids that don't leave. What you mean? We got a lot of we got a lot of schools that oh, are, yeah, that are really yeah, that are yeah. really well reputed. Right. That are churning out I know what you highly mean educated kids with Webster, the tech slew. Yeah. I mean Webster, they not slew, leaving because it's... I'm so washu like yeah. and you've got all those kids exactly. leaving the school, getting out of school, but also a bunch of tech companies realizing the Midwest is way cheaper than the West yep. or East Coast. Yep. And you've got Square opening up, you got Microsoft opening up an office right next yep. door. You got La, uh, Uber putting an office here and Lyft talking about it and like the Midwest is cheap, and yeah. and tech companies that are paying Buku. three, four, five times the space for the space are coming here and going, oh, it's cheap. 
oh, St. Louis has like six schools that are real good, turning out a lot of really smart kids. Yeah. So those kids are staying here. Especially if you have a dot com. It was on the list a few years ago. They said if you have a, a business that doesn't need a brick and mortar, St. Louis is one of the top places to live because of the cost of living is so yeah. low. And you yeah. don't have to, you mean you're going to profit more. So what, it's, it's, what do it's they logic. call those spaces when it, everybody's like in a big community space? Incubator. Incubators. Yeah, I yeah. just left one of those out, off a page and uh, Walton. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And it was, they still in there working. It was a have bunch guys, of people. Have you guys been to Cortex? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I walked we were, through it. That's like a changed tour. in like the last five years. Yeah, they got that. They got that whole block. That whole corridor. They, they, that's it, where Square is. That's where Microsoft's opening their office. That's where mm-hmm. they've got like Ubers in that same building. Mm-hmm. Like it's all tech companies. Yeah, and, and people if people don't realize that Square and Twitter are St. Louis based initiatives, you know that's a that's a St. Louis and that made all of that happen. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know I what met, I mean. I met so. Them. That's why I'd be like, yeah, it ain't it ain't no reason for uh, for us to not to be, you know what I'm saying, pushing more for that. I mean, it is a reason. Ain't no jobs in St. Louis. Let's be real. In the Mound City. Ain't no ain't no work. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You damn near gotta go out of out of town, work for six months and come here and, and just live here during the summer season and take care of your property and then leave a property manager. But that's that's attainable too. Yeah. Interesting. All right. Well, uh I like where that conversation went. You know, yeah. it went it went in a different direction than I I thought, but I liked the, the conversation there. What What did you What you want to go? You wanted you some pettiness quiet. out of there. No, 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 no. Oh, I mean, okay. I, I just didn't expect gentrification to be the. I mean, it makes sense though. I you know? think yeah, most no, of the people yeah, ain't even racist. They're not used to that. Oh, they're hundred percent racist. <laughs> you know, like they hundred percent. Yeah, I think hundred percent racist. Uh, you know, I go into this bias racist, so we ain't gonna just you know. <laughs> I ain't even going to. But I people, think they biased. That's all. But we don't see stuff on the news of them calling the cops on like trashy white people. They calling the cops on black people that are doing nothing wrong. They wish harm. And I grew up in St. Charles, y'all. There are trashy white people that show up and don't get shit said. Right. And black people that are minding their own damn business. Yeah. They shit, get, I digress. Shit gets said. I digress. So they want it to escalate. They want all of it. They know all of it. They're not ignorant. Also, look at all the people that have called the cops. Look at because we, we've been we are able to look at all the people that have called the cops. I ain't never called the cops. No, look at all the people in these videos. <laughs> I just I, right. so I just wanted to say, I ain't never called the cops. But look at all the people in these videos that are calling the cops. Like, they're people that don't look like they care about black culture. They look like people that are super comfortable where they are and right. are super uncomfortable around people that aren't in the place where they are. Well, hey, then, when Permit Patty ducked, though, like, what was she <laughs> doing? Like, you get, we she see you. She, 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 she the one that started crying, too? No, no, that was, that was a barbecue uh, Betty. She started crying <laughs> hardcore. And days. they all look the same. I ain't gonna lie. You know, oh, God, I here you go. Really <laughs> date out my here you go. Nah, no, 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 they don't come in. No, they kind of look like they kind of all go to the same. And they shop at the same place. Yeah. I don't know how to say that, bro. All right, let me ask you a question. I meant to put this on the list, and I forgot to. You know how they got look. Anyway, you said what? You know how the guy who's gonna call the police on you look anyway. Someone, I'm gonna call the cops on somebody in my building. Oh I'm gonna my reverse God. them. Someone, someone Let's went to the it. leasing office oh, with yeah. a noise complaint, uh-huh. but they didn't call the cops or knock on my door. You? Yeah, of course. They, they didn't do. They <laughs> waited till the leasing office was open. Exactly. That's some snitching, bro. That's snitching in the loudest area. In the party area, the loudest area in the, the city. neighbor. Our neighbor came to, uh, to Aaron today and said, "Sorry about the noise last night," because they were partying late as right. well. Yeah. Like this was what the fuck. But that's why I would think you in that area because that's that Sular energy. So you can right. you be know loud. Saying? Yeah, but see, I think that I think that's a part a component of fascism. That's another thing, right? Exactly. There, man. Once you in nineteen, you know, eighty two. If you read that novel or eighty four, whichever 84, one it is. Eighty four. Um, eighty two is when I'm born. Represent. If you were playing, <sighs> don't stop the movement all night. They wouldn't. Have but called. um, you supposed to turn. You supposed to turn. You supposed to tell on your neighbor. You know what I'm saying? You supposed to be watching your neighbor. You supposed grow, to be having complaints. Grow some balls. You knock on my door. You bitch. Shaving hair. But um, shaving hair. What I want to talk about. Probably a black lady there, though. I'm glad you're here. That's what's I, really You may about. know about. I'm glad you're here because you may know about this. <laughs> this nigga may just be talking. Um, the Proud Boys. You heard about the Proud Boys? That look was so dead. Uh, mm-hmm. Black n- white nationalist group? Yeah. All right. Ain't they the ones having that thing in D.C.? And they, they you messing with that? Uh, no, yeah, they no, they're supposed to be having like a white national rally or something in DC, right? Yeah, well, I I don't I just learned about the Proud Boys from my tattooers on Tuesday. Yeah, and like he was like, if I see one, I'm fucking them up. And then I started, I like right then and there, like I didn't know what the fuck he was talking about. <laughs> to the Google machine, so I, I started googling it. <laughs> Proud Boys, the Proud Boys. So apparently he he ran across someone who was working at a bar that I guess he frequents, and they ended up firing him once they found out he was a Proud Boy. Yeah, that's how that's how uh, fucked up this group is. Yeah. Uh, what, what do you know about him? 
I, sh- I just heard they, from what I remember, I think I might have seen a Vice story. I seen some you know, kind of funny, expose. There's though. a problem. This is what really ticked me off about this. Not like you enjoy I, Vice, right? Yeah, I do. You, do you watch Vice? Anybody? Yeah, I watch okay. Vice all the time. So listen to this. I'm going to read it right off of the, off, off of the wiki. Uh, Proud Boys is a far right men's organization with presences with presences in the United States, Canada, and the United Kingdom. It was founded in 2016 by Vice Media co-founder and former commentator Gavin McInnes. McInnes describes the group as a pro-Western fraternal organization for men who refuse to apologize for creating the modern world. Proud Boys has been described as both alt right and alt light. McInnes has denied the group is alt right. Uh, the group takes its name from the show to blah blah blah. Which is, this is weird, actually. The group takes its name from the show tune Proud of Your Boy, a song introduced in the 2011 stage show version of Disney's Aladdin, and a tied character apologizes what? to his Wait, mother. so they're tied to a super brown poor dude that had no home and stole things for a living? So this is the weird part. <laughs> what? The Proud Boys <laughs> have a four-degree initiation process for new members. In the first degree, a recruit must declare, I am a Western chauvinist who refuses to apologize for creating the modern world. According to the Southern Poverty Law Center, the second degree involves five or more Proud Boys punching the recruit until he names five breakfast cereals. To earn the third degree, the recruit must get a Proud Boy tattoo. The Proud Boys website says that the fourth degree is reserved for those who have endured a major conflict related to the cause. The cause. The cause. The cause. It's like biker shit. It's like biker gang shit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I see that. It's basically the new age, young version of the the KKK. I would agree. And uh, they have a uniform. (laughs) <laughs> a black Fred Perry polo shirt with yellow piping. These niggas, these are goofies, man. They, I, I think, uh, I think uh, it's a little. I got, I got to do more research, but there's a little more supremacy than it, than the the surface. Of course, yeah. Uh, uh, would would sh- would show. You I know, see like, this as part of the red pill movement. I don't know if y'all the, hip to that. That red pill movement, y'all know about that. No, what's that? Um, to me, it's, it's similar to that incel movement. You know, the the the, uh, the people that's involuntary uh, celibate. Y'all heard about that? Yeah, incels. Incels, yeah. red pill. It's basically all this. It's a pushback against the Me Too movement. It's a pushback against multiculturalism. You see what I'm saying? It's it's nationalism to the goofiest degree. Because I mean, it just got started in 2016. I wonder if that's why Jesus and Mero left Vice. Damn. Uh, I'm beginning. I'm beginning to think that has something to do with it. I was getting to think that has something to do with it. Once I realized it, because I don't fuck with Vice anymore. I, yeah, I'm not going to fuck with Vice no more, because I didn't know dude was the cold creep. Co-founder. I always felt that vibe from Vice. I just uh, thought it they was trying to be edgy. Oh, Jesus and Mara, done. Oh, what are you no, guys I'm doing? talking about, like, is... Are you guys is, engaged? Yeah, is yeah, Vice... Yeah, I'm, looking, I'm reading something right now about it. Like, is he still part of Vice? Or it don't even matter, though. Yeah. It don't even matter. If he co-founded it, I can't fuck with it. He now, you know, floor. you don't fuck with, with Chick-fil-A, right? And you don't fuck with Papa... Uh, what is it? Uh... uh the Papa sandwich John. niggas, Jimmy John's, oh, yeah. Jimmy John. right? What's up with Jimmy John's? Or uh, oh, the the owners oh, killing what's the spot animals. At home? What's the spot in Africa? at home? Right, like that's right across the street from oh. Flying Tiger. What's that restaurant? Robata? No, no, right across the street from Flying Schlafly. Tiger. Schlafly. Schlafly. I don't fuck with Schlafly either. Well, tell me about Schlafly. They donated majorly to the Trump campaign, majorly. Uh. And they, the the Schlafly family donates heavily Republican every year. But they they, <laughs> they took the extra mile for the for for the good old Trump boy. People just, don't know that all the hips is being there hanging out, spending their money. Mm-hmm. So I yeah. want to point out real quick that the Urban Dictionary definition of proud boy in nine time, nine cases out of ten are people tearing them to shreds, and it's fucking awesome. The first one's masculinity's weak stomach vomiting up its own digestive bacteria and manifesting itself as counterfeit fortitude. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I mean, it's, it's basically all the all the goofies, man. All goofies. the the yeah, the the Kanye's of the European world. I mean, like for real, because they be on some weird stuff. Like the red pill movement is basically is that like you, named after the Matrix red pill blue pill? It, exactly. Okay. Is is them not taking no shit from the Me Too movement? You know what I'm saying? They listen to Joe Rogan and they always be on Joe Rogan ass about representing. Cause you know, I, I, I mess with JRE, and you know, a lot of his guests that he has on kind of shoot them around uh what's old boy that they've been they putting got brown of- people in there too though it's so weird yeah yeah it's they do mixed it's a mixed if you, group if you see somebody with this on you know yeah it's on. like Damn, a, and they have a hand sign too that's a like, nice looking polo though oh is that right. what that is that's been going around forever i think the i think the other version is like the the the, the game to make you look at it but you can't look at it but yeah. this is their hand sign which 
I don't know that. That's means, a nice but. looking polo though. I ain't gonna lie. Oh, so the guy who started um, Fred Perry is a, a Nazi guy. Oh, uh, okay. let me That's let good. me let me drop that out for a And, oh, and no, the funniest th- th- this thing is the is, symbol. This is the symbol. What you got? This is the symbol I'm looking uh, at. Right. Okay. What is? It? I'm on their Twitter. Like- no, that's not the, that's not the symbol, bro. <laughs> okay, but no, what's funny? No, nah, man, is... I, I want you. I want people to know about it. I want especially like people that I fucked with, because I want them to be able to see that shit. Because they're out here for sure. They're out here for like, oh yeah, heavy. Yeah. Oh yeah, and they sure. deep. That, and they deep. They organize and they move without talking. Yeah, and that's why I be like, you know, the government is fraudulent on certain shit because they got black identity extremists out here for people like me. That's you know what I'm saying engaged in, engaged in uh... like you know cultural studies. You know what I'm saying? But as soon as some somebody that's melanated, you know what I'm saying, and we let's say we put a group a group together like this, we black identity extremists off the flip. You see what I'm sure, saying? Sure, look at how oh, Black yeah. Panther got the Black Party Black Panther Party for self defense. So and that's that's, that's some recall. recent shit with that <laughs> FBI. <laughs> Hell no. Nah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's crazy, but we gotta be we gotta be aware of this shit, and they because that's the reason why they wearing polos and not sheets over their hey, faces. Them polos is hard though. You better not. I better not see you in no goddamn Fred Perry polo, dog. Like he's a straight up like Nazi dude, bro. Well, it, it's, it's no room for me to not celebrate the Fourth of July. You know what I'm saying? People it, it, soon I will be seen as uh, you know a traitor. You feel me? It's not, it's I, no I got, room. I'm so torn about being an American in America. Like, sure, I feel. Sure. Like super awkward about the shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, and, I, and I'm I'm big in the World Cup, so I see all these people celebrating a country so hard to the point where like they're crying during matches yeah. that they lose, yeah, like they're yeah. like they're so attached. And I feel like I can't be that attached to America, Thank but God. I'm American, yeah. so like that leaves us a, with a no identity almost. Yeah, yeah, it's fucked up. It is. It's something I've been thinking every Fourth of July. I think about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, yeah. Man, and I try. Sure. Sometimes I try. I try. To be patriotic, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I, I want to be. I just all I know is America. We could, yeah. yeah. You, you know, gotta be yeah. patriotic yeah. about the right reasons. That's all. You know what I'm saying? Like I seen some story. I don't really follow that T and Tamara, but I guess her husband, one of them, you know what I'm saying, was on social media uh, uh, this Fourth of July and was basically saying something along the lines about how black people should fully engage in you know Fourth of July, and that's just some bullshit, bro. Don't you know you? I know you married this black woman. But don't come out the gate trying to tell us, you know what I'm saying, or even insinuate why we should be celebrating the 4th of July. I think it's a, a sin and a shame that we don't celebrate Juneteenth oh, like no. we should. I was at the Juneteenth Festival right there on Madison. But it's just, And it's not even, it, I don't think it's like people's fault for not knowing about it. I feel like, oh, I, have, I, I, have no, I still feel have no like, idea about it. I feel like it's on purpose not taught and not spread. And like, I, it has to be at this point. You know, yeah. like we've been hearing about Juneteenth all of our lives, but there's never been any hoopla about it. There's never well, been any. Well, it's not that family dollar in the, in the front aisle when you come in. Actually, the, you absolutely. know what I'm saying? Go buy some shit. So it's just not in your consciousness. And we're it's it's also our fault as a people because you will see, uh, like the uh, uh, it's Chinese New Year and it, and yeah, like yeah. they so those cultures celebrate, but we are not celebrating our own culture. That's how robbed we are. Yeah, that's, a, that's we how. like the hood should be letting fireworks go like they did last night. On Juneteenth. Yep. You feel me? Yep. And but it, it'll come. I don't even want to sound like a downer, cause but it'll come. You know what I'm saying? But things like June first. I celebrated June first for the Tulsa uh, what's, massacre. What's Juneteenth? Juneteenth. Juneteenth is the 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 day that uh, we were technically freed. Our okay. ancestors. This is when okay. they the last okay. state, the last. You know what I'm saying? Hold out. Nineteenth is when they I finally. No I think it was Texas. I want to say it was in Texas when yeah. they finally got the last. Yeah, yeah. And even then, that's probably not true, but that's when we celebrate it. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, Jesus wasn't born on December 25th. Right. The same, same Jesus science. Jesus wasn't born. Um, no. Oh, oh. Christos, Jesus. Around the way. All right, so moving on. This is an interesting topic, and I want to get your opinion. Um, and this has been me- making the rounds in the media. Uh, Terry Crews testified uh, <laughs> on, was it, was it Congress, on being sexually harassed. That was Damn. the goofiest Bruh. Man, so okay, I knew he's going to have a radical opinion on this. Like, I knew, oh, like, he's going to just stir the pot. Go. I <laughs> Go mean, Siraj. I'm just saying, not only did he look goofy, you see what I'm saying? This is the problem that I heard from other people. Not even the problem I got with Terry Crews. You know what I'm saying? One people say if he would have made a move on the agent that touched him, he would have, it would have been a total reversal. He's role. already been blackballed. Right. He's already so been shut out of Expendables 4. Let's not be blackballed because that's some, that's some racist shit right there. Ain't no blackball. You feel me? But yeah, he's already been That's white true. casted. You know, I'm flipping everything. He's been <laughs> white casted. You mean you mean you can't get into no white casting rooms, no white casting couches? That's because we run that. That's called blacklisted. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but, but they, I'm saying that everything. He's saying, is, "Why does it got to be black?" Yeah, 
I'm but not even saying why it's, it's negative connotation. Like, I know it's black. Um, okay. yeah. So here's the thing, right? All right. So the the an agent a, a, a movie producer called him and said, "Hey, if you don't drop this case, we're not going to put you in Expendables 4. And Russell Simmons. And and Russell Simmons. And he literally is now not in Expendables Four. Sure. Like this, like even now that he's like, okay, if he knocked him out, this would have happened. And all of a sudden, Terry Crews is the bad black guy. Yeah. The angry black guy who's overreacting. Yeah. But now that he's gone this way, he's getting the ramifications. But it is shedding light that these people are using these betas with power who have become alphas are now using their power. False alphas. Yeah. Exactly. The betas in real life. Yeah, yeah. Right. Because that who else who does that? Like all these like Weinstein's, all this sexual forcing, all these Chris Hard, was his name Chris Hardwick? Yeah, it's all, people that like fell, all this into, manipulation. fell into being able to make what they wanted to have. The fucking happen. the fucking nerds. Like this, I was watching uh, what podcast? <laughs> I, uh, I don't know who I was watching. Somebody, uh, it was uh, Chris D'Elia, I think his podcast, and he mm-hmm. was talking about how like everyone's wor- always worried about the powerful jocks and the, the strong people, but yeah. it's the nerds who are like, I guess. Didn't have a good, good the didn't have anything like didn't have good social skills. Yeah, Once they get yeah. power, they're abusing it and they're fucking people over. And I, I, man, as a man, you're like, no, I'm knocking that motherfucker out. But if you're Terry Crews, all right, his and comment on that is checks brilliant. are millions of dollars and you're trying to get them, and like, well, that you, was, this yeah. person is a fucking check holder. And now you're forced to be awkward. You're forced, like, well, that, yeah, that, that and that's what even, it is. And that wasn't even like the comment he went with. It wasn't even like trying to make money or like yeah. the people that give me money he was like as a black man yeah you have only so many chances to make it he and knows if, and if i had done something yeah they're all gone yeah uh, well based on all the characters he's played i think he should have he should have clocked dude because in all he's honesty, not in position to no i mean he, of course he ain't. i'm just saying based on all the characters you play you feel what i'm saying you play the super alpha masculinity. So it's like riding a bull. But the you know Hollywood, no, you see, don't understand how fraternal so, Hollywood is. That also doesn't yeah, yeah, work. True, true. That also doesn't work because look at how violent football players are every single week during the football season mm-hmm. on TV for us. But then they He's go home. He's a former home, football player. But then they go home and hit their girls and like people aren't like, well, they are violent seven days a week and mm-hmm. like, well, he's acting, but I think, like you said, those acting roles they play a real contributing factor to how these people when they call in, you know, permit Patty. She didn't probably watch Terry Crews, so she think, oh, you know, she. I think what she would be surprised about how she's saying because Terry Crews is he like played, in real but life. First of all, Terry Crews plays more goofy than violent, but. One hundred percent more comedy than I violence. I think he do both now because he did the Expendables. Yeah, then but he did the Ice Cube have, shit. Yeah, Brooklyn Nine Nine. You have even right, in Brooklyn in Nine-Nine. Friday. He's, he's goofy. He's uh, white chicks goofy. Like he's funny. Yeah. Like, and now, that's kind of now. his thing. And he's always been that guy. Now. I'm sorry. True. He's always been that funny guy. Right. So. Uh, what you're saying, I don't really feel what you're saying because, like, oh, because he does violent movies, he should have been violent. Like also, that doesn't what work. He's trying you understand to say the manipulation is he probably ends up in jail about. after that night. Also, if he hits if them, he hits do, and if he hits them, true. it makes white people mm-hmm. right when they're like they're dangerous. Yeah, yeah. A big black even man Terry Crews is dangerous. Yeah. See, look, even the ones that are funny. Yeah. Yeah, but at least Terry had my respect still, because he don't got my respect on this level. I like, I just don't feel it. I don't, I don't see the end game. Well, you don't also. You, I don't think you understand. I don't, you're not understanding the mindset of what's happening and the the power abuse. Like, because you're like, I would never take that. Uh, no, I didn't say I would never take it. Like, I'm that's just the problem. Saying, like, I'm he's one, forced I, to. He's forced to. Yeah. I, I don't think that's the first time. I think that's just the first time they actually went to the whole, you know what I'm saying, and touched you. You know, I, I feel that. But they done touched you several times, bro. You know, whether it's through, like you're saying, this ain't the first time they done manipulated you into the situation. You know, no. I, I just think Terry man, going in front of Congress, it, it seems a little too, you know what I'm saying, it seemed out of order to me. I don't even, I don't even got no science behind it. What would, I, I you, just, what would you rather have him do, though? Oh, like I told you, I would have, I would have rather him being who he, who he said he was, instead of trying to play the game, because playing the game don't never get you nowhere. Like you said, he, he's out the mix. You said he's he should, out the circle. You said he should act the way he was when he's acting, and that's not playing the game. I think he should have pulled back into his football mind, and you slapped that bruh. You slap him like Will Smith. What when happens got, when he slaps when he, him, bro? Will like when he Will loses Smith got movie kissed on the red carpet. He's going. He, no, no, he saying, loses his job. His, his listen, career. Listen his this. career when ends. Will Smith got kissed on the red carpet overseas, right? He, he beat his ass. He did, you know, no, he, he, slapped he slapped him. He slapped, slapped him. him. He slapped him. Slapped him. him. Like Fifty Cent made highlight of that. I totally feel Fifty a vibe. Like, bro, it's a way for you to maneuver that, but you don't take the whole route where you just. Oh boy, was a nobody. The dude he slapped was a nobody. Yeah. 
this dude is the nobody. dude that it was a nobody his talking talking to as a celebrity. A, as a black man, I already know when you come up here grab my genitals, that's some old Jack Johnson. You know, I can I can do anything to the strongest black man, even if I'm the I'm the weakest. Oh European. yeah, that's what you he see was what doing. I'm saying? So I already know in my mind, me if I was Terry Crews being in that circle, I'm already know what you're doing to me one on one. So I got to give you at least a playful slap, like hey, you know. No, here's the thing. Fuck all that. You here's ain't gotta thing. beat his ass. But if you're Terry Crews. If you're Terry Crews, right? That means you've got his experiences. That dude grew up with an abusive father. Uh-huh. And he's gone through this shit his whole life. Right. He has been consistently ha- having a- power exercised over him. He has not had power to do anything against. He's grown up. He grew up with an abusive... He talked about this recently at, like, at, at some event, like a, a battered women's event or something like that, where he talked about how his dad hit his mom and hit him, and he had like no power to do anything about it because he was too small. And so this dude has grown up with men abusing power over him and, and forcing him to do things. And in this situation, he said the first, his, first, his first inclination was to get violent. I mean, and but they, pulled, ain't, ain't he, that what you should do? I'm going to be honest, though. I mean, I'm not saying no, he ain't thinking about but ain't that what you would do? Anybody at this table no, without no. any... You don't solve violence what you got to with lose? violence. Hold on. What you got to lose if you did that? Like, you don't have no I'm endorsements, not, no... Yo, here's the thing. I'm not Terry Crews. So I'm you ain't going to beat nobody situation. ass to go to jail? No. Oh, no. I'm beating a motherfucker. Go on record right that's now. That's a problem. You do that shit to anybody here, you're going to get your ass beat. What, you See, say, what, you, what you're saying is... That's a part of the problem. ...that you're not, you don't rationalize situations. And that's the problem is, which I mean, makes it I'm, sexual... Hold on. Let me talk. What makes it sexual misconduct is using that power. Now... Say you say you you get a job and they pay you a hundred thousand a year, and your yeah. boss comes and says some slick shit to you. Say some you, shit, or or grabs you inappropriately. Oh, grab me. You're gonna throw away everything for for that. Yes. Depending, it's a fifty fifty chance. That's completely different. That's a fifty fifty chance. A, so he chose you his chance. Me, yeah, yeah. He, I'm not saying he chose it, his but chance. But from what y'all was saying, to make it seem like, oh, that's not even an option. No, I'm not, we're not saying sure. that. But we under. Okay. I, but I'm not going to lose respect for Terry Crews for what he did because no. he like that's no. He was forced. That's what rape is. I that's what you. sexual misconduct is. I got. That's you. what being put in that situation is. He know damn well he can slap the shit out of the dude. We know that. We know. He know. You can look at Terry Crews and know that he can slap ninety percent of people. Mm-hmm. And, and the, fuck and the, him up. And the dude that grabbed him knew that if he did, either way his career was ruined. Exactly. You can't always live by career prison ruined rules, now? though. And no. His career, no, 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 no. Okay. Because you know why? Because he's not in, not in Expendables. He was in, I, he was in he fucking fine. Deadpool. Time will yeah. tell. He fine. Time will tell. I think he's fine. I think he's going about it the right way. And I think people like you, no offense, need to kind of understand uh, basically victims. I just don't empathize with it because I'm just saying Cause for you're, me. Because you're, you're like, ah, I'm going to slap the shit out of everybody that, that, that no, violates. No, I'm just saying but if I didn't. A, no, I didn't. That's, that's not what I'm saying. That's what makes it I'm saying misconduct. That, that's what makes it forceful As far and long as his career is and him not being in the Expendables, I'm not going to lie. I would have took the chance. Man, as Terry Crews. Expendables It's not like shit, he just dude. came into the industry. It's not like he ain't doing commercials. It ain't like you're saying. He's in TV. He's in commercials. He's in film. I'm going to be honest. He's a coward because you need somebody oh, power. Hey, let me let me finish. You Go need ahead. somebody that has permeated the industry already to do some street nigga shit. You can, all the big industry motherfuckers can't live by industry standards. Cause then when when some street nigga shit happen, Nate, what do you? You think? already got an issue because you ain't representing for us. What do you think, Nate? Fuck that. He's not a coward. That's bullshit. Yeah, he is. Uh, That's nah, bullshit. Man. I can only tell you what I would do. You should so y'all know what I would do, but I don't think what he did was wrong. I think him playing the long game and playing the game the way they play the game uh, is quite helpful to him. Yeah, I think it, it takes a it who, takes right, another level. Logic question here. All right, on on a of self awareness that I don't have. <laughs> a Terry Crews punches him. Right. Right. Yep. Who loses? Terry, Terry Crews. Crews. Now Terry Crews uh, a year later. <laughs> Uh, talks about the incident uh, to bre- bring awareness to it to the Congress. Who loses now? Oh boy! Thank you. So he wins. Yeah. yeah. It's the only way. I mean, you don't have to punch him. But, Terry but Cruz hey, Terry Crews can pick Sir, him off the ground. You lost to Roger. Anything. Respect. I mean, not even Siraj. Siraj and, and a lot of other brothers. Because like I was saying, what else you got to do? Get to NASA, bro. You in TV? You in film? Yeah, it don't work like that, man. It's fraternity. You say, but like calling them a coward is like right. saying all the women that have, that have been abused by all these it's, people exerting power li- are cowards. Literally victim blaming. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah, you stabbed that nigga too, right, right, motherfucker. Cool. I'm telling my Moving daughter. Moving on. Yeah, I'm Moving on. Stab that nigga. Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. Jail, ruin your life. Like, you do all and that your shit. Your family's legacy yep. over 
Fuck that. Over Baby, because you're going to be in counseling for 20 years after this. Stab that motherfucker. Okay. For real, though, the last thing Everyone I'll, looking the last He's not going to be in counseling. He's insane. For real, not, the last thing I'll say right. is... Tell my daughter to stab any nigga that touch you. You don't, don't do you and wait for no police. None of that shit. Uh, I wish I last, had I wish last, I had my control and I can just like turn his down. No. Like <laughs> the last fine. for real, the last thing I'm gonna say on this is that like We gotta move on, guys. Yeah, the last thing I wanna say on this is that like violence is very rarely an answer. And it only begets more violence. Tell that to the and military. A, and a look, dude. All right, I'm so, never, I'm, yeah, yeah. And, so and and acting violently in a situation where effects. someone is trying to make to exert power over you in that way, uh being violent is only going to make it worse all right moving on um nate <laughs> how do you feel about lebron james i'm okay with it man i didn't want him to go to la but you know if that's what we gotta do that's what we gotta do baby so now you're a lakers fan i'm huh? a lakers fan Lake i got purple you got you, yellow you, socks you on right now. your jersey yet <laughs> I ain't ordering. You know I ain't gonna buy no jersey. I ain't. I ain't a fan like that. Can you I just, just say watch the game? Can you just say you're a LeBron fan? I'm a LeBron fan. You're not no a doubt. Lakers fan though. You're a not LeBron a Lakers fan. fan. I don't right. care. Now, does that make him a fan? I want them to win. Now, I was a Peyton Manning fan. I didn't give a shit about football, but I liked the way Peyton Manning played. That I, this is years, so. This is years ago. You followed. The, wherever he went, you went. Wherever type he shit. goes, Peyton I Manning, goes. He only played for. Uh, he went to Denver before. He went wherever to he goes, Indiana, he I Indiana. goes. And people want to act like they wouldn't do the same thing. If Jordan had came back out of retirement, he went to the Wizards. If and Dickens, jo- no, no, weren't Wizards that was, fan. was at the end of his career. This is the end of it LeBron's was, career. FYI, not, yeah. Did you see his season last year? Get the fuck out of here. He got at He's least three years. on the How? decline. This is the Twilight, though. This is the final stage. 30, it's the final stage. Thirty-two or thirty-three. What do you think? Okay. Cause you're the best. Around. Either way, he got, at least, no. he got at least Anybody? a good four years, probably. <laughs> Karate Kid soundtrack? No? Uh, listen, listen. If Jordan would have came back from retirement <laughs> after he went and tried to play baseball, and that nigga would have went to any other team, guess where every motherfucking Jordan fan would have been? They would have been right there with him. Let's go, Ohio. Does it take away from his <laughs> legacy? <laughs> it's not enough. The no, fact that he team. can't stay on, he hasn't stayed on one team. Does it take no. away from his legacy? He's courageous. Oh, man. Oh, he's I don't know no? nothing about sports. I'm a, just a LeBron supporter of his brand. I don't know shit about what he's <laughs> he scoring. getting his money. None of that shit. <laughs> he but I'm a supporter money. of him. I'm not he your fan. He's trying to own I'm one of these say, teams. I'm going to say. You know what he did? That if you're not, let me let talk. Me tell you Can what I talk? Can I talk? No, fuck that. He left that motherfucker and then built a school. That's all you have. God damn it. That was your point. Yeah, that's my point. What does that mean in, in the world of man, sports he to me? He cold. He's great. He's the He's greatest the basketball the people. Top player He's the people's of our time. You know what Jordan True. did? Yeah, fuck Oh, Jordan. my God, Nate. What do you It's do? hard to have a podcast if you don't, if you just stream thoughts and just constantly go. And what did he no do? there's no room for, for <laughs> uh, anyone else. What did he do, Ted? I'm just saying, bro. He you're not a real fan got his of bad kill. Oh that's what he did. All right. You're not going to let him talk. I love Nate. No, it's so annoying. <laughs> hate Nate. Nigga, let all them black kids get shot. We hate Nate. All through the 90s over them goddamn Jordans that come out every goddamn year. You can't even restock them. I don't even know how you niggas making money off of them no more. I love Nate. That's what he did. Say it, Nate. He didn't give a fuck about nobody. Yeah, he played for the Bulls his most of his career while he was good. Nah, no, I did that. Did he help the I people when he was doing that shit? Fuck no. Nah. My man spreading love all around the world. He went to Miami, spread love. Cleveland, love. L.A., love. Helping black babies get educated. The goddamn greatest of all time, the GOAT. Brought a championship to Cleveland, a place they ain't never won ever and probably will never win again. You know what you sound like right now? You sound like LeVar Ball. <laughs> <laughs> That's who you sound Bruh. like right now. You right. You said all that, and you did not say anything what about, about say, what I'm saying. Yeah, saying. I was about to ask, like, wasn't this about him getting traded to the Lakers? I could like, be a politician. You literally put me in office, not baby. Put me said in anything office. of importance. Surprise, you said everything I would have said, Nate, but go ahead. Well, none of you guys are hey, true basketball fans. My grandma says goodnight. Nah. I'm a true basketball fan. Say, I keep up with the numbers. I keep up with all the teams. I don't have a team loyalty. I've never Because you're not a fan. I'm, I'm a fan of basketball. You're not a fan of I was basketball. a fan of Iverson. I was a fan of Grant Hill. No, you're, you're, you're a microwave generation up, fan. I kept up with all those and that's what's up. numbers you're, and those you're, stats. Your mind is not loyal enough to sports 
I kept to up. actually care about a team. I watched the your Seattle attention, Super Your attention Hon- span Sonics. is only one player long. Right now? And that's sad. I agree. What are you talking about? Your attention span to I, basketball You have been paying so little attention play. to him. Have, yeah, he's just, he's just, just talking. My, You're just talking. It's like a fan, who, one, a fan who's not really a fan, long? they just talk. And they just talk about LeBron James did this, LeBron. LeBron James did that. And you can't name five people on the Los Angeles Lakers right now. Ball. No. What college did he go to? Uh-huh. Hang on, he, what, named, he named one. Well, I don't what, watch what college, college basketball. You, but not, you don't know. But you don't know what college. I don't watch college basketball. Cool. Do you know the number he went last year? Ingram. Michael Porter Jr. or something like that. Nope. Was Clarence Thomas his nope. name? Something. <laughs> nope. So that's three. Uh, you have to, you Rondo. Have to prove yourself to them. Lance mate. Stevenson. You just saying that because Lance Stevenson just got traded. I'm keeping up with the shit. What? Most people don't even know he went there, do they? Yeah, they know. I know where Boogie Cousins is. I know where Anthony you, Davis is. You have you the know equivalent that, that of Porzingis is injured. What are you talking about? I keep up with basketball. You barely keep up with basketball. Who, who's who's the best player on uh, the Magic? On Orlando Magic? Yeah, Gordon. Okay, I knew that too, motherfucker. Uh, you see what I'm saying? You a fan? I, I'm a fan. You guys ask friends. him the same question about a team he doesn't know about. All right, uh, what's the name of the best player on the Milwaukee Bucks? I can put Poco Poco. I knew that he wouldn't be able to say his name because no one can. Who's the best player? Who's the coach of the Milwaukee Bucks? Oh, you, come on, man. Oh, you know, come on, man. You're not going to keep up with the who coaches. Who got fired as coach uh, this year from the Milwaukee from, Bucks? I, Common knowledge. I Common know, basketball I, knowledge. I missed that one. Yep, I sure missed, did. I missed that one. Sure did. I know about the Toronto. So who was your question, fired. Tech, about the LeBron? Uh, my, point, my point is, uh, I just wanted to know how Nate felt about it because I knew we'd argue about how it. How do you feel about it? I feel... Uh, how uh, do you feel about your favorite team getting another all-star and acting oh, that's like your favorite they're team, not LA? ruining. No, 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 no. Um, uh, for the, the last NBA. six seasons, I've been a Golden State fan before they were winning, and Nate will attest to that. Uh, my, that's but true. my number one team, he did, he did, he did. He yeah, did. my number one team he is the New York Knicks. Success. And I predicted the, the reason why I, I predicted their success is because I'm a New York Knicks fan. That's the number one team. Always going to be a Knicks fan. Yeah. Um, and David Lee got traded to Golden State Warriors, and I was a big David Lee fan. Um, so I started watching Golden State, and then. In college, um, David Lee's from Missouri. By Del, the way. Del Curry's uh, son was playing, and his, you know, the mom. And I was like, the mom was a big thing in the co- when he was in college. They kept on talking about his mom, um, and I just started following Steph. And then he got drafted, and I started following them. And I told him back then when it was David Lee, um, uh, Steph, and, Barnes, uh, Harrison Barnes. I said, this is a team. Like this is a really good team yeah. on, on paper. And it went to the cup, and then he was right. Like maybe a year or two later, they won. So like, that that's how much I follow basketball. That I follow, I I know like yeah, shit yeah. like that. Like, and yeah, I'm, you know, legacy shit. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not saying that you're not a a, a real knows, fan. You're a fan, a real fan, but it's kind of a he microwave a way fan. to look at. It's a new trend. Microwave. It's kind of bullshit to me. I, think, I only I mean, follow he players. Domi- he dominated like, the what? East. Who else could you follow? He dominated him for eight seasons. Well, I mean, a lot of people that don't live in Cleveland root for their teams. I don't have a basketball team in my city. I'm sorry. Hey, maybe that. Well, hey, te- technically, maybe that's I'm it. a diehard Blues fan. Until they, I mean, I, 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 I question your sports loyalty. <laughs> I'm a diehard Blues fan. I don't, I don't have any. Will you football. die for the Coliseum, Nate? No, not absolutely not. <laughs> All right, moving on. Um, do you have any literary facts for us? I have some stuff. I feel like no one here cares, but I'll say them. Uh, most expensive book in the world ever purchased was a book of Leonardo DiCaprio's shit called the Codex Lester and it sold for $30.8 million. Guess who bought it? Who bought it? Bill Gates. He's gonna run the world. Sound uh, like some money laundering. <laughs> that sounds weird, right? Yeah. yeah. Like $30.8 million. Dollars. Um, also, the longest sentence, it may, may not be the longest sentence ever, but uh, Les Miserables, which is a book written by a guy named Victor Hugo, has one sentence in it that is 823 words long. That's how That's all called a run-on, my, my nigga. Yeah, a run-on. <laughs> That's, a run on. That's how yeah. all my old uh, MySpace messages used to be. <laughs> yeah. no, no periods, bro? No periods. No punctuation. You know that. And Alice in Wonderland was banned in China because whoever banned it thought that making animals talk like humans was dangerous. Mm. Yes. I feel you. All right, quick hits. Oh, I'm sorry. Disastrous. Yeah. Disastrous. Uh, quick hits, video games. I've been playing Detroit. I love it, love it, love it. Yep. Um, I've never really played a game like that. I don't even know the name of that type of game. Um, Story-based. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of cinematic. Cor- it's like, yeah, you know, it's kind of uh, cringy like to press a button when they say press a button, but the story is so good. It kind of makes you feel like you're in a movie. You get it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Um, what you guys been playing? Uh, PUBG a lot recently, actually. Uh, other than that, I've been playing the Assassin's Creed Chronicles, which are those little side-scrolling ones I made in between. Mm-hmm. I've been playing the Russian one. Um, the gameplay's fun. The cutscenes all feel really cheesy, and like they were put together by like the intern. Um, <laughs> and some of the voices are like, yo, stop. But I enjoy like side-scrolling stealth games. They're really fun, and there's not enough of them. Mm. That's my that's my gym. I've been playing Dragon Ball Z again because I got dominated by a, a regular. <laughs> So it bothered me. Oh, I thought you were the super gamer. Yo, exactly. That's that, why I've been playing it again, because I got beat by a that, regular guy. That book that sold for millions was Leonardo, never happen again. Leonardo da Vinci's book, not DiCaprio. I knew it was Leonardo DiCaprio. Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> like, okay. He said DiCaprio. <laughs> My mind was like, bullshit. Someone, someone uh, just commented DiCaprio? Yeah, and I was like, fuck, I said that. Good Leonardo catch. da Vinci. <laughs> My da mind Vinci. was like, yeah, no. I just automatically put da Vinci there. I ain't yeah. think DiCaprio. He going to tell you how to get mauled by a bear? <laughs> what are you going to tell you? Exactly. One of my favorite <laughs> scenes in the get movie. Get these hoes. Is somebody out there? Uh, it's Carter saying hi. Oh, okay. Yo. Hey, Carter. Yeah, Carter was saying something like this. We have it till 11. I don't know. I hey, hello. Oh, okay, have, he apparently sees. Apparently, we don't have till 11. Yeah, yeah. We got a couple. Come on, hey, come on, come on, Carter. Carter. You good? You good? What's, What's up? It's the, the shit show. Man. We don't. Uh, What's up, man? We don't really care about oh, what happens. We all get taller and downstairs, guys. You know, we're we're nine to 11, but we're leaving in five. We're done in five minutes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was, I was just see what's up. Take your time. I'm just trying to make sure. This is this is actually needed. Here and do it like I did last time. Yeah, it's yeah. all good. Carter Lake. What did is y'all have to say about uh, the World Health it's Organization it's making an gaming organ. an addiction? <laughs> no, we talked about that what? on the podcast. Oregon. I, I watched a documentary about <laughs> Oregon. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, man. The Senyasins. Anybody know about the uh, Senyasins? Take your time, man. If you... Yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're keeping it strict to an hour, so we'll be out of here and coming. Yeah, cool. Yeah, sorry, it's schedule's weird. That's all good. You're good. Uh, movies. We talked about Ant Man and Wasp. Anything yeah. else you guys got on the radar? Sorry, they to got bother some you. bad rap. I got that they gonna for that, record. Uh, so. Boots Riley. <laughs> you guys are. I might. Talking at the same time. I might get to screen. Sorry to bother, but I. It's during a work day, so I'd have to get off work. So mm. it might not happen. Um, Damn. Let me get that screen. Speaking of sorry to bother you, uh, who's in that movie? Let me get that uh, screen. Tisa Keith, Thompson, right? Yeah. Stanley. Tisa yeah. Thompson and Janelle Monae Stanfield. are a couple. Yeah. No, oh, they're not. Yeah, they broke you up. You saw her come back on Twitter like the next day and be like, "I said a, I said a thing, that could mean a lot of things, but it didn't mean the thing that media thought it meant." I think I just think Janelle's trying to be uh, uh, more private, and they probably got into it about that. But I still, think, I still think they're dealing with each other, yeah. which makes me yeah. happy. Who? Don't worry, ladies, I'll find Janelle you Janelle Monae and Tisa Thompson. And we'll Tisa oh, Thompson was the Valkyrie. They have an uh, vaginal sex. Mm. <laughs> Tribbing. Bumping. Do you guys know what that means? I'm not taking no. part in this. They I don't know. Right. Bumping gums. Um, uh, any, uh, movie, uh, music, anything <laughs> good on the Christ. radar? Scissors. S- Scissors the oh, singer? I went, uh, I went and watched Hereditary. That shit is so scary and mind fucking. Uh, I cried a little bit and I wanted to walk out. <laughs> you, did you cry? Because you said you said you, someone else bit. cried. No, he was no, like, no, no. Someone else cried in theater. I teared up a little bit. I was talking. The dude screamed. The other guy, a dude screamed. He's like, oh shit. And like physically are you, sure the, are you sure the dude that screamed wasn't you before you cried? And no, 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 no. I cried because there's a moment <laughs> where the main character is crying because of something tragic happened. And it sounded exactly like my mother crying uh, is something tragic happened. Oh, now happened. I feel like a bad person for making fun of you for crying. And uh, it hit me. I when, feel like a bad person. And that's how good the acting is, though. Because that, that scream felt very real to me. Mm. And it, it, it triggered yeah, yeah. some... some yeah, yeah. You and Terry Crews to get coffee. Jesus yeah, that's Christ. fine. You know what I mean? <laughs> you ever heard of the, tr- the term trash person? <laughs> oh, man. I don't know, man. I did want to point out that at one point he said LeBron was courageous for changing teams, but Terry Crews a coward. <laughs> <laughs> so that's interesting. I didn't think cor- he's not courageous I'm... for changing teams, but yeah. You said, how do you feel about LeBron James? You went, courageous. Yeah, I <laughs> anyway. mean, I think he's a courageous guy for anyway, like, like all listening. the stuff that Nate was bringing up. That's the reason I said that. Versus yeah, Jordan's he stand legacy. Up, he don't, yeah, I just he like don't, his legacy better you know than I mean? Jordan. Niggas was getting shot in the 90s and too. You See, know what I mean? Jordan sat, sat and watched. Both of them started talking about shit. No one brought up. Just they don't have anything really important to say. That's yeah, true. So uh, night, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say Nightcap Podcast. Actually, merchandising, on, I merchandising. Actually have music. I actually have music. Um, there's a real dope rap artist named uh, Abi the Nomad. Indian dude. His shit's yeah, super good. Yeah. Super, super good. Um, I've been listening to his shit for a while. Uh, interacted with him on Twitter a few times. He's kind of a small artist. It deserves some exposure. So... Oh, cool. I'll be the Nomad. His album's called Marble. It came out in, like, January. I'll check it out. It's super good. Good. I Nate. just listened to the Carters today, and that's... 
I have I still haven't given that listen. I still haven't given Drake a listen. It's pretty great. Drake's album is a Drake album. It's really long. Yeah, surprisingly uh, you talk about it. Y'all talked about that already? And uh it's not that good. It, it's you get tired of him complaining about whatever Kanye did to him. It's just Mm. It's fourteen love songs. I mean, it's it's seven love songs, and then it's uh, another seven. Why why did you release your dog on me, uh, Kanye? Why would he you said do that? that? He didn't say that. No, but, but that's like I mean, the it's kind of the gist yeah. of it. It's like, oh man, I'm in your house and I'm hanging out. Why don't you put your wild ass dog up? Why you <laughs> why you let this wild ass dog bite the shit out of me? I thought we was friends, and that's. That's the second I f- part I f- of the album. I feel like the if there was, the if they were, I should have heard like a Little Wayne and Drake song just dissing Pusha T. Like that would have made me happy. Little Wayne, they had, don't they had want beef no too. Smoke. They had beef too. With Little Go- Wayne don't want the smoke. Uh, the Young Thunder wanted the smoke, and he got it, and it didn't work out for him. <laughs> well, and uh, let's see. Let's close it out. Uh, Sixty Minute Shit Show. Follow us on Instagram at Sixty Minute Shit Show. Uh, follow us on SoundCloud, 60 Minute Show. Um, we're gonna. I'm working on trying to figure out how we're going to get on iTunes with our name. Uh, so that's, it's been proven difficult in the past, so we're going to try it again because I think gotcha. we need to be on iTunes. Uh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I'm Tech Supreme. We might have to change the name again. Make it 60 Minute-ish show. No, I tried to. Really? They won't let yeah. us. And I had all the graphics changed to ish, and they they shut that down too. Fecal. <laughs> 60 minute poop show. <laughs> poop, 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 poopy. Uh, uh, you guys have any shout outs you guys want to do? Uh, yeah, I uh, I have three podcasts I'm releasing or working on. Uh, I do Bounty Board every Thursday night. That's a game podcast. Uh, I'm doing that right after this. Uh, it's live on Twitch when we when we do it, but it gets posted the next day on iTunes and Stitcher. Working on a podcast with my grandmother called The Procedural Generation, which is something that I haven't told anybody yet. Oh, looks like Exclusive announcement here uh, about video games and playing with her. Our first topic's about playing a game in the ICU waiting room when my grandfather was in the hospital. Uh, and then I am three of seven episodes completely finished with our D&D podcast. It's getting close. It will be out before I go to Comic-Con, so you've got hey. two weeks. a week and a half that it'll yeah. be out. Um, right. Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. So I'm, I'm working on all those things, and I'm super excited about all of them. So Cool. Yeah. I'm Productive. On, I'm on Twitter and everywhere important uh, at Lubwub, L-U-B-W-U-B. Lubwub. Xbox, Lubwub. PlayStation, Twitter, Instagram. I, and you were Love Wub before Rick and Morty too, whatever that yeah, is. Yeah, I was Love Wub in 2012. Speaking of Rick and Morty, I don't think you guys understand this bag right here. Right? I do. The oh, bag dope. is fresh. I, dope. I can't even find it online. I just Next level. randomly saw this. That's dope. It's pretty fresh. I That's like dope. it a lot. It's probably made by Chinese children illegally. Damn. Damn. They, they did it's a good ass job. They did a good job. <laughs> Look at this shit. They got the authentic joint right here. Good ass I mean, job. Yeah, they don't come up with stuff, but they can re-engineer some shit. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, they come up with shit, too. They come up with shit, too. Yeah, yeah you know, but yeah, not know. so much. It's like 60-40. They, they'll say it. They take more ideas and, and restructure them more yeah. than they actually come up with. Yeah. I mean, because they society don't leave room for creativity like ours. I you're, mean, good at, you're, good at, you're good at discounting good at mastering the entire things. populations. Yeah. Not, well, yeah. that is our episode. Thank you for listening. <laughs> uh, we hope to see you soon. I should run Vice. Uh, follow, subscribe. What? And we're done. We're See done. y'all next time. Bye. Peace.